Hello everyone, I am Apura Popat again and I'm currently a chief resident at my residency program and I'm ultimately going into cardiology fellowship starting July 2025. I just wanted to take a moment to reflect back on my journey on how I started my med school in India and eventually I was fortunate enough to become a chief resident and now I'm going into cardiology fellowship. So it's the beginning of new year. 2025 and I want to wish you happy new year and uh, also want to take this as an opportunity to inspire some of the people who can achieve uh, anything what they desire. So talking about myself, so I started my med school in 2013 and uh, I did my medical school from GMERS uh, Medical College Ahmedabad and that's a, that's a city, I think a very good urban city in Ahmedabad that's around uh, I would say 30 40 minutes from its capital Gandhinagar so I did my medical school in Ahmedabad before before my med school I was uh, in Rajkot for my high school that's 11th and uh, 12th grade it was an amazing time back then so I did my med school from 2013 to 2019 and I would I would definitely say that med school is something which can really shape your career and one thing i would point out is most of my career trajectory were because of my amazing mentors believe it or not if you don't like specific field that means you didn't get good teachers of those field so i was very much inspired by one of my anatomy professor and he was you know using this uh, sketchboard vacom sketchboard to teach online and that's how he started his youtube and this was my very very early exposure to youtube in 2013 and uh, he 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 gave me his uh, writing pad and said you know you can uh, use use this to make your own youtube videos and we were actually trying to prepare youtube videos to submit it for elsevier back in 2013 we had those elsevier olympiad competitions so I was making cardiac embryology videos and, and uh, we submitted that and we won that. Eventually I uploaded those videos to YouTube uh, in 2013 and I got really good comments. The, the cardiac embryology video is still hosted in YouTube. And good, good comments on that this was a very great explanation. That's how you know I started teaching on YouTube. One thing about teaching is that you have to be thorough with the concept if you want to teach those. And then I kept on making those YouTube videos. I bought my own writing pad. This was a big thing back in 2013. I bought it on EMI, I still remember. And this was my Diwali gift. I kept on making those videos and I really started liking teaching. And uh, then I was taking satellite classes for, for medical colleges in Goa. And then I was teaching nursing students. I was teaching physiotherapy students. and. You know that's how the different colleges started to contact me and this was still I was in medical school and uh, I would I would honestly give this credit to all of those teaching that really made my basic foundation very very strong so and then eventually you know we had our internship in 2018 and 2019 you know had had good experience there but there was still something always behind my mind that I, I really want to practice evidence-based medicine. And, and, and then, you know, I ultimately decided to prepare for USMLE. It wasn't uh, decided before my internship. So you, you guys ask me many questions that, oh, is it too late? It's never too late. You should start your USMLE journey whenever you want to start. So I started my USMLE journey after I finished my internship in 2019 and uh, at that time USMLE was still pass and fail. So I took one year to actually prepare for USMLE while I was working as medical officer in ICU. Took one year, I, I, I really studied all the videos and everything, you know, it took me almost I would say four and five years. I started Dr. Najib's videos in 2013 and I was able to finish all the videos by, by 2019. So it took me a long time to finish those videos, but I did see all of those uh, videos and I'm also thankful to him for my concepts. Um, basically watched all the videos from Kaplan, BNB. I, I didn't watch BNB. I, I'm somehow a visual learner. So I watched uh, you know Kaplan videos, uh, watched Dr. Najib's, 
I watched uh, Pathoma, Sketchy, all those videos while I was preparing for step one. And that's how I was able to, you know, condense everything into one and, and make my own USMLE step one course. And we have over 500 students uh, using our course. Eventually, I, I finished my step one and then uh, started preparing for step two, then applied for visa. Visa is also one of the nerve wracking thing. Um, if you are preparing for USMLE, you always have that, you know, fear in your mind. What if you don't get visa? Uh, what are you going to do after that? But eventually I was lucky enough to get visa and then came here for observership. So graduated in 2019. I finished my step one and step two by 2021 and 2021 I was here. So that was the year when I applied for match. So I rotated in uh, from June 2021 to December 2021 and that was the match cycle application and uh, had really good interviews and eventually I matched in 2022. So I started my residency in uh, June 2022. It's initial years in residency, I would say that, you know, it's a different culture after all. It's a different way of practicing medicine. It was a steep learning curve, definitely, initially. You know, everything is digitalized. Everything has electronic health records. You have to document everything, what you do here. You have medical legal responsibilities. So it was, it was a steep learning curve in my residency in the beginning of my intern year. Um, but I loved the the care which patients were receiving. You actually do things which are evidence based. You, if you don't know, even right now, if I'm if I'm in a senior year, I still go back to up to date and review the things, uh, and then decide on the treatments because the evidence is so 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 dynamic. Just now, instead of PCV twenty vaccine, it's PCV twenty one is recommended, and. Uh, you know, so many changes are happening. Medicine is very dynamic, so you have to be up to date on those, those concepts and uh, on on those evidence. So that was my that was my first year. I would say I I tried to make a lasting impression in my first year of of uh, residency. I worked uh, worked very hard. It didn't matter to me whether I was, you know, staying up late in the night. I was staying up late in the hospital, but I was, I would always make sure that I'm reading the patient-related stuff um, after I see the patient. So the chief resident position here in a residency program is decided by many factors. They they look at the in-training exam scores. They look at uh, the person's reputation. They look at the personality. They, they take interview again for the chief resident. They look at the voting process so all the residents in the program vote for who should be the chief and uh, they combine everything come up with uh, you know a decision and ultimately i was a chief you know resident for third year in my program different programs at different different chief resident positions some would have a third year chief some would have a fourth year chief so i was fortunate enough to serve as a chief resident and even in the chief resident, I always try to exceed uh, the expectations. And then finally, I applied for, for cardiology. So our, our uh, program had in-house cardiology fellowship. There were many factors which, which I haven't told anyone so far that how I changed my mind to get into cardiology fellowship uh, directly after my residency. But uh, one of the variable I would say was was one thing that you are still in your residency salary if you if you would say that you're still earning seventy thousand around seventy thousand dollars during your residency that's three year and if you become a hospitalist you directly make five times jump you make around three fifty thousand dollars a year or if you become a primary care your salary is around three hundred thousand so it was you know one variable before i you know I, I was able to pay off all the debts and everything was uh, the finances that should I should I wait uh, for a few years join as a hospitalist and pay off my debts and then should I join fellowship but eventually you know um, all my mentors said that if you are still in training you should you should not you know go into an attending position like let's say join hospitalist and then go back to fellowship that's kind of a hard transition so eventually I ended up you know, deciding to apply right away. So everything turned out positive. 
you know many many faculty members were very happy to send email to to program directors of cardiology fellowship that you know they were vouching for me so everything turned out good and uh, eventually i matched into cardiology fellowship those were like some of the highlights i would say and of course you know you would have their own struggle you will you will have your own struggle you know regarding whether it's uh, whether it's financial struggle relationships you know you're talking about your family lives you're talking about other health issues everyone would have their own personal struggle and initially my struggle was financial struggle right so you know one lesson i would say for you to learn is that okay if you keep pondering upon that pondering upon those struggles and say that oh you know you know i don't have money i don't have this i don't have that so is it is, should i still keep on doing that if you just you know focus on that aspect what you'll hear from the the listener is is just the pity they'll be sorry oh my god you are going through so much rather than empowering you so one thing i learned if you talk to someone talk to someone who is really experienced in it talk to someone who can really change your life like a mentor rather than talking to someone who has no idea on what you are talking about and you would rather get just get sympathy and pity rather than empowering yourself that's one thing so talk to someone who is experienced and who can mentor you you just need one mentor to change your life and the and the second one i would say you should always try to exceed your expectations and and this really makes a difference if you know your your view definitely makes a difference you know you would have residents saying that oh my god i'm working day and night i have my nights coming i have my make you coming no you just that's a part of duty you signed up for that so you you you, you just change your mindset on oh that's great i have my nights coming i'll be more independent and i have more opportunity to learn those kind of mindsets would set you apart from being a star um, that was it so i wish you happy new year again and uh, that was my journey from india to chief president and now to a cardiology fellow thank you for watching and please do like subscribe and share and if you have more interesting story or if you would like to join my youtube and uh, be my guest please uh, send me an email and i'll be happy to do that thank you